Us here, who has a child, you know, a daughter, a son, or children? I, for one, became a father for the first time on 13th of May this year. It was indeed a rainy night, and about 10 minutes past midnight, she was brought out of the theater and placed in my arms. About three days after she was born, we were discharged from the hospital. You now with excitement, you now you're parking the car, ready to show her the world and the home she will grow up in. And as we were driving out of the hospital, the reality, the sudden reality of the world we were bringing her to hit me. We were joining the road, and uh, as we got gotten right into the queue, there was this taxi right in front of us. A very, very old taxi. At its exhaust pipe, it was emitting this very thick fume, this choking, choking fume. I felt helpless to prevent these fumes from getting into the system of my daughter. Studies show that 85% of vehicles sold in Uganda are sold used. And this is at an average age of 16 years at registration. This is really typically end of life technology. And this is the technology, these are the cars we're importing in our country. Because of the, their age, they are polluting at three times more than the recommended international standard. And it's no wonder, and it's really sad, that over 31,000 people die every year in Uganda as a result of air pollution. And 13.8% of our children, my Atara, our Ataras, are, are being diagnosed with tracheal asthma every single year. But because these vehicles are really old, they cannot burn fuel as efficiently as they were designed to. So we are looking at a fuel efficiency of at least twice as much as what the vehicle was actually designed for. Twice as much as the standards that would be recommended internationally. And it's no wonder that petroleum and allied products are the most expensive import commodity we bring into this country. At over one billion dollars every single year. You can do the math, I don't know what the current exchange rate is, but that's over 3.8 trillion shillings per year on just fuel, petroleum, and allied products. And the second most, import, most expensive commodity we import are vehicles at close to half a billion dollars every year. Let that just sink in for a moment. As we left the hospital, you know, about we arrived home, settled in, and my four days of paternity leave ended, Unfortunately, I would have loved for more, but that is what it is. And on the fifth day, my first day back at work, I was seated at, at my desk, and I received a call from my wife. And she was, she was telling me how Atara was not, she didn't seem to be fine. There were some challenges that needed the urgent attention of a pediatrician. This is five days old. I got worried and concerned that this environment that my daughter, Atara, has been exposed to could be one of the reasons why she is like this. I quickly rushed back home. You know, in that moment, there is panic, you know. As I was trying to join the road, there was this constant flow of border borders. It's like someone went and opened the tap of border borders. And I just said, spewing out. I just couldn't enter the road. One border border after another, after another, after another. At that point, you're looking at the time. Five seconds can feel like 
five minutes, like an hour. But I managed to maneuver through and reached home, picked up and brought up to the hospital. And thankfully, there was really nothing to be worried about. But it got me thinking, you know, just getting home and getting back. And that congestion. You know, we'll, studies show within just Kampala, there are three major modes of, of transportation we use. Of course, foot, not part of them. Number one is border borders. I'm sure each of us has taken a border border once in their life, or even today, at least more than once. Border borders account for about 42% of trips made every single day within Kampala. But they move only 9% of the people moving in that day. Private cars, which I know some of you came with, including myself, unfortunately or fortunately, account for about 37% of trips made every single day. But they also move just 9% of the people. Now, matatus and buses, we have a few, which really look at as mass mobility. You're moving very many people together. They account for about 21% of trips every single day. But they move 82% of the people. Studies show that we lose up to 25,000 man hours of productivity every day in traffic jam. Just seated doing nothing. And we burn over 500 million shillings worth of fuel idling our cars in traffic jam every day, every single day. I personally spend about 600,000 shillings on fuel a month. If there was an alternative solution for me to be able to move without really driving, I would gladly take it. Because this, this 600,000 shillings can enable me to save some money for my Atara to get a good education. At Kira Motors Corporation, we strive to build a better Uganda through automotive technology. Kira Motors Corporation is a state enterprise that was established to commercialize the Kira electric vehicle project. And our genesis started way back in 2007 when a team of students and their lecturers participated in a global consortium of 35 universities led by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And the intent of this consortium was really to build, design and build a plug-in electric hybrid vehicle targeting the Indian market, dubbed the Vision 200. Makere University was the only university in Africa that participated in this activity. That event was, that, 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 that project was completed and in 2008, the Vision 200 was unveiled to the world in Italy. And the team came back home and they had been exposed, they had been exposed to the skills, the knowledge of what it means to actually make a car. And it was not really rocket science, as we might presume. When they came back home and uh, realized the, the, the needs that we have as a nation, they purposed and decided to actually undertake a project to make a car in Uganda. This was an extracurricular activity. Back at Makere University at that time, it was the Faculty of Technology. And they were working within a, an office of one of our, uh, Professor Tiko Ritogboa that, that Patricia mentioned earlier on. Really small space that we used to call a dungeon because really it was like one. If you've been to, the, to Makere University, there is the Faculty of Technology, which is now the College of Engineering, Design, Art and Technology. And there is a very old building. It looks like a spaceship just landed from space and boom. Right there, that is where the story began. The team worked day and night. After, after lectures, the students would stay behind with the, with the lecturers and figure out how do we do this, how do we resource, how do we get money to buy these materials, to buy these, these things, these inputs. And lo and behold, November 2011, the Kira EV, Africa's first 
electric vehicle was unveiled to the public. The team did not stop there. They realized, yeah, we have an electric vehicle, that's good. But it has a range of about 80 kilometers. What can we do if I want to drive to Arua? So they pursued better technologies that could be able to, within the current uh, you know, boundaries of what the technology could give us, what how can we do a vehicle that can take you all the way but you still drive sustainably? And in 2014, the Kira EV Smack was unveiled to the world as Africa's first hybrid electric sedan. Now, the reality of the matter is over 90% of Ugandans actually do not own a car. They rely on border borders, they rely on taxis, they rely on buses. <coughs> what could we do to create a solution that would be in the reach of every Ugandan? So the team went back on the, to the drawing board and was figuring out what we can do to really address the challenges that are so dear to us and to our hearts. And in 2016 February, the Kayola Solar Bus, Africa's first solar-powered electric bus, was unveiled to the world. The Kayola Solar Bus presented a solution, a light at the end of the tunnel. As a bus, well, it was designed as an executive seater bus, about 35 people seated with sufficient legroom. You know, the, the first time I entered that bus, when it had just been completed by our engineers and designers, I felt I had just entered a Boeing 777. <laughs> Truth be told, it was magnificent. And the fact that it's a bus, it means you're replacing 30, 35 personal vehicles on the road. Now imagine 100 of these buses on the road, how many cars you're taking off the road, addressing the challenge of congestion. It being an electric bus means it has zero tailpipe emissions. So you're not thinking about the fumes that will enter our cars and put my Atara at risk. Now, this journey of mission vehicles made in Uganda, as we call it, back at Kira Motors Corporation was not a walk in the park. We encountered what I would call storms. And these storms were both internal and external. You know, when you're, when you're working with a team and part of the team, because of the challenges that are set before them, they are literally writing the course of history and figuring things out as they come. The challenges right in there in keeping the team motivated. But even the externalities, you know, people are always telling you that, no, this can't work. You're wasting your time. There are better things that Uganda should be focused on. You know, this is not the direction we should be going. But we persevered, not because we could, but because we knew that we were onto something. We were creating a solution that would not just impact our lives today, but of our children and our children's children. We persevered, and our friends and family that stood by us and encouraged us every night as we put in those sleepless nights. Our wives, my wife, that would wait for me till late in the night as we figured out one or two things. That kept us going. And knowing that we are part of a solution, kept us moving every single day. And we are grateful to all of you that have supported us in one way or the other. We are thankful to the government of Uganda that through the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation has committed to finance this project until a vehicle rolls off the assembly line. They have given us 100 acres of land in the Jinja Industry and Business Park to establish the Kira Vehicle Plant and realize our dream of mission vehicles made in Uganda. 
And I call upon you to join us in this movement, to be our ambassadors of mission vehicles made in Uganda as we build a better Uganda through automotive technology. Thank you so much. <laughs>